When we talk about climate, we talked about the fact that the areas at the center of the world receive m more sunlight or direct sunlight than the areas in the poles. And we call these areas the tropics, and they, they receive more sunlight both because they're directly being hit by, by sunlight, and which means that they, uh, and they also have sunlight longer uh, because of that as well. So the days are typically longer and you also have direct hits by sunlight. So because of more, a greater exposure and intensity, the, these areas of the world receive more thermal energy, which ex explains the fact that the water temperature uh, is going to be higher in the areas of the world which receive this, this uh, greater temperature. And so you see there that the middle of the Indian Ocean, Pacific Oceans, and Atlantic Oceans are much warmer than the areas at the, at the, at the temperate or polar regions. Now you can also notice that the warmth of the uh, of the tropical areas can actually be distributed up. And you can actually see that here, that the entire northern part of the U.S., even though it doesn't receive as much sunlight, is still very hot because of currents. Because currents will be constantly be moving water up and down and distributing that heat around. We'll talk about that later. But also notice that over here, uh, you, you, you're getting a cooling of what's supposed to be a very tropical area because of cold water sinking from the top. So you see those patterns over here as well. And so currents are going to be important. We'll talk about that in the next chapter. But I wanted to, for now, to realize in general that the water in the tropics is going to be warmer. And and so um, that's, the, that's the major factor that will affect the water's temperature is the amount of solar energy received by, by the water. But I also wanted to point out that the, how much the water heats up actually depends on a lot of factors. The water has a very high albedo, which means a lot of the uh, light that actually hits the water just reflects back into space, which means the water actually has a role of cooling down the planet because it reflects a lot of the sunlight that hits it. Uh, so the, water, the Earth is like a big mirror of blue. In addition to that, water also has a very high specific heat. So the, water, the, hit, the heat that it does absorb it actually takes a lot of heat to make water it actually change its temperature. So that means that in order for water to actually warm up, a lot of heat needs to be absorbed, which means that it actually helps cool down the world by absorbing most of the heat that, that actually hits the surface of the earth. And then water acts like a greenhouse gas when it's a water vapor because it will store this heat once it actually receives it because it doesn't like to change temperature. So that means as a vapor, it would actually store heat around the earth which warms up the earth during the night, which creates the greenhouse effect. Carbon dioxide and methane gas is also part of this process. And when we pump more of those gases, we actually increase the, the, the carbon dioxide level. We talked about that when we did global warming and the climate chapter. But the water vapor also contributes to that. So the more water evaporates, the more greenhouse effect is get takes over and also remember that water is actually trapping methane gas and carbon dioxide is what we call a carbon sink it, it tends to trap more gases than the atmosphere has in terms of carbon dioxide and and methane gas which means you you're more likely to find those gases dissolve in the water than you are to find them dissolving the uh, present in the air that means that when water evaporates, not only are you adding water vapor to the air, but you're lowering the amount of water available to dissolve carbon dioxide and methane. So that means that with more evaporation, you actually increase the greenhouse effect even more because more carbon dioxide and methane gas will leak into the atmosphere, which speeds up the greenhouse effect even more. So when we pump extra gases in the atmosphere and warm up the world and cause more water to evaporate, we're actually causing more problems because of that. And remember also when the ice caps melt, you have even more, even less reflection and even more water energy being absorbed by the atmosphere because the higher water's albedo is even higher when it's, when it's actually in its solid form. Now, back to just water. Remember that water's albedo is very high, which means it's very reflective. It also has a very high specific heat, which means it's, it takes a lot of energy to make water change its temperature. And finally, it takes a lot of energy to make water evaporate. It's called the high heat of vaporization, which means when water finally evaporates, it takes a lot of heat with it, which is why it warms up the planet as the water vapor in the stratosphere and, the atmosphere, and also the troposphere. And now, that means that the water helps control the temperature of the world, and the, cur and the, and the temperature of the oceans has everything to do with the climate of the world. And that's actually very important. All right? And you actually see...
that the, uh, you can actually measure ch if, the, if the temperature of the oceans is changing, it will also change the temperature of the climate of the world, which is what happens during the El Nino when more sunlight is hitting the earth because the, uh, the, the sun is at the maximum, more evaporation will happen in the Pacific Ocean, which will lead to greater amounts of water vapor in the atmosphere and therefore more storms, more rain. And then during the La Nina with less heat, you got the opposite and you have droughts. So you see how the oceans are tied to the, to the climate of the earth because of the water's high albedo, which protects the earth from absorbing it too much heat. But it also, water, the heat that, it, that does get absorbed, it takes a lot of it to actually warm up the water, which helps the earth cool down the earth. And it also, when the earth finally, water finally evaporates, it takes a lot of heat with it, which protects the atmosphere from being too cold during the night. Uh, and that's called high heat evaporation. So the water is tied in to the climate of the world, and it's actually very, very important. Now, there are two main factors when you talk about, three main factors when you talk about the temperature of the water. The first and foremost, the latitude or the proximity to the equator. Definitely, well, that will determine, as you can see in the, in the, in the screen right now, the temperature of the water. Uh, other than latitude, you also have depth or how deep the water you are, that's also going to determine the temperature of the water. Check, check it out. If you are near the surface, the temperature is usually warmer because you're constantly being hit by, by sunlight. But if you're in the, uh, in the middle, there's an area called thermocline. Now, look at this temperature graph here. You see that in the surface, because it's constantly being hit by sunlight, we call this the photic zone. That's the area near the top that we constantly gets blasted by sunlight. You're going to get more algae here because there's more sunlight and things like that. As soon as you pass the photic zone, which it's like the first 200 meters of water, after the first 200 meters, the water, so this area here will be about 200 meters of water. After you hit those first 200 meters, now you hit an area that the sunlight will start becoming rarer and rarer and, uh, and as you go deeper and deeper. And so the water suddenly, between 500 and 1,000 meters, it suddenly drops in temperature. So the thermocline is this area of the ocean where the temperatures suddenly drop as they as they as the sunlight becomes rare and rare and it's no longer warming up the the, the too much and remember you the water is no longer circulating as much because of currents and because of of waves and so you have more you have less life forms and all of that uh, allows you to uh, actually re reduce the radiation that's actually penetrating that so you actually see that there's a layer of water on the top where you see most of the uh, of the life forms you see most of the exchange in heat. You see the, the exchange in gases. All of these things are happening near the surface. And you also have chemicals which are playing with the absorption of the water in the, near the surface. Nutrients which are actually act like surfactants which actually change the amount of water that's being absorbed. You have precipitation and ice which is melting near the surface and, or precipitation which is bringing new uh, cold water into, hitting the surface. Uh, so the surface is affected by the uh, heat uh, way more, and also gas exchange way more than the deep water is, which means the water near the surface is much different from the water in the bottom. You're going to get more gas exchange near the surface. You're going to get more solid, so solid dissolves in the surface. You're going to get more uh, precipitation, more ice in the surface, more in the radiation near the surface. You're going to get more uh, reflection happening near the surface. You're going to get more gas exchange, more circulation because of currents and wind and so that water is very different from the deep water of the thermocline now right in between you're going to get a little bit of a mixed layer but there, there is a sudden change in the actual <coughs> sorry about that a sudden change in the actual chemistry and temperature of the water as soon as you hit the thermocline and very suddenly the water will, will start to change and you actually if you were fish you will, you will feel the difference in the dissolved gases, in the temperature, in the currents, and everything as you, had, as you hit this mixed layer or shear layer at the bottom of the surface water. Then after the thermocline, you, you hit what we call the cold bottom water. Now the cold bottom water, there is no sunlight hitting this. And so no warming is happening. So it's going to be getting colder and colder as you go deeper and deeper into the water. Now notice something interesting. It should get colder and colder, but it never quite gets to zero. What's going on there? Even as you go deeper and deeper into the water, the temperature will never get to zero. And that's because the pressure of all these layers of water sitting on top of the bottom water protects, it makes the particles be closer together, which actually warms up the water.
Now, it won't warm up the water too much. The water is still getting colder because it does not receive thermal energy from the sun. But it is not going to get to zero because the pressure is constantly going to prevent that water from ever becoming too cold and actually freezing at the bottom, which is important because if you, ice is less dense than water. So if the water at the bottom were to freeze, this ice would float to the top, carrying all the life forms with it and killing them all. And so it's very important that this doesn't happen, and that's really good for life. By the way, you could get areas of the ocean which are hotter in the bottom if you have, say, a volcano eruption taking place here, which is creating a thermal, which is, uh, has a layer of hot water rising by convection to the top. And that's another thing that happens sometimes in the bottom of the ocean. Now, the, the freezing point of the water... Everybody knows that the freezing point of water is actually zero degrees if the water is fresh, though. But in the oceans, because of the salt that's sitting in the water, it's harder for the water to freeze because the water has to worry about be dissolving that salt. So it can't really connect as easily with each other to make it a solid. Because since it's connecting to the salt particles and dissolving those salt particles, it has a harder time actually... Uh, attaching itself to it to other water molecules and actually freezing because that's what the definition of a solid when the par particles connect and become uh, to get into a crystal and so the water that's saltier is harder to freeze which is why they spray salt out there in the north because it makes it harder for the water to freeze and so th this is called the freezing point elevation when you add water it's actually harder to freeze all right so by the way, it's also harder to make it evaporate, which means for, for the water to melt, to evaporate in the oceans is even harder because it's the the salt actually at, at connects the water molecules uh, to to them to itself, and so not allowing it to them to escape as easier. So that means the the boiling point of water is higher in the oceans, it's, and the freezing point is also higher in the in, in the uh, in, in, in sorry the freezing point is also lower in the oceans which means it's harder to make the water freeze so no that means water will not freeze in the oceans until it hits something like negative four degrees negative three degrees so we call this the freezing point depletion and boiling point elevation the fact that the salt water makes it harder for the water to freeze now water can actually freeze even in the oceans because in the polar ice caps the temperatures will drop below 20 and so you get things like this. You see here in the top right corner, a vast expanse of ocean water that is basically frozen. That's called pack ice. And when you look at it from the satellite image, you actually see here uh, how it looks. Uh, this is the Arctic ice cap and the Antarctic ice caps up there. And you actually see a big, ginormous block of ice, which is covering both land and ocean. Now, I want to point out that in 1979, the pack ice during the winter was much, much larger than it is today. Notice at how much polar the ice cap has melted away since 1979. As much as 20% of the polar ice cap has already melted since 1979. And you can see that here on this image. Now, uh, what you have in these places, by the way, also is glaciers. You see here, this is land, okay? And you see all of this is ice, but this ice is like a river that's constantly flowing slowly over thousands of years towards the ocean. And once they finally hit the ocean, they will melt away and form uh, icebergs, which is what you're seeing happening here. So the icebergs will actually melt away and be carried for miles. And you see those icebergs there. They are blocks of ice that came from the glacier. You know, you know, but during the winter, this whole area here will actually freeze and form large pack ice the way you see up there and that's where things like polar bears live and as the pack ice melts away their habitat is slowly melting away as well but the pack ice is actually important for earth because the more ice you have the more it actually um, protects the earth from absorbing heat because a lot of this ice sitting in the, in the earth actually deflects the sunlight back to space. It reflects the sunlight back to space. So as we have less and less ice in the polar ice caps, that actually causes the Earth to absorb even more heat, which causes even more melting of glaciers and ice caps. And so that is very important, and I hope you understand. But remember that in order for the water to actually freeze, it must be even lower temperature than zero because the salt makes it harder for the water molecules to actually attach to themselves and freeze. But that does make it easier for the water to attach to the salt, which makes it harder for the water to evaporate. So there's uh, um, boiling point elevation, but freezing point depletion. It's harder to freeze and to evaporate water in the oceans. But 
water will still freeze in the oceans and form this pack ice, which is good for the Earth because it deflects sunlight back to space. And that's been going down because of global warming and we're getting less and less ice and more and more of these glaciers melting even before they actually hit the sea. Remember, glaciers are rivers of ice that we're losing because of global warming. All right? Next, we talk about color of the oceans.